Hi, here's a quick demo of Minikube. How many times have you felt that setting up and configuring Kubernetes is complex? And if that's been stopping you from trying out Kubernetes on your local environment, here comes a pretty nifty tool called Minikube, which is a part of Kubernetes 1.3. And what Minikube does is it sets up a full-blown Kubernetes environment on your local development workstation or even a laptop. It doesn't require a lot of resources. That's because Minikube runs Kubernetes in a single node running inside a VM. And this VM can be based on Xype, VirtualBox, or VMware Fusion. So setting up Minikube is pretty straightforward. You just need to download the binary change the attributes, move it to the local bin folder and fire minikube start command. Once you have that, minikube should be up and running on your machine. So let's check the status of minikube and it shows running. As I mentioned, minikube runs inside a VM. So when I type minikube SSH, it takes me right into the VM. And if something looks familiar, yes, it is based on doc, boot to Docker VM. It uses the same VM, the same ISO, and the same virtualization environment based on Xive. You can retrieve the IP address of your VM by typing minikube IP. So this will give us ready-made access to a single node environment running the latest version of Kubernetes. Minikube can also point your local Docker client to the Kubernetes environment. That avoids the process of creating an image or building an image locally and then moving it to a registry and then deploying that as a pod. So instead, you can point your local Docker binary, Docker client, to the daemon running inside the uh, Minikube VM. So when you type Minikube Docker env, it points you to uh, the eval command, which will set the right environment variables. And from now, you can use the same Docker client as the Kubernetes environment. So Docker ps, Docker images, everything is now going to show you based on the single node Kubernetes cluster. So that is about Minikube. The best thing about Minikube is that it ships with a dashboard. So when you type Minikube dashboard, it opens up pretty cool UI in the default browser. So currently I don't have anything running here. So let's go ahead and deploy a simple WordPress app and this app is based on the same sample available on Google Container Engine documentation. So what this deployment does is it creates a couple of local volumes for persistence. It creates a secret that's going to be passed on to WordPress at runtime. It deploys a, WordPress, a MySQL service, which will be used by the WordPress web application. So very simple, just four commands, and this should get our WordPress deployment up and running. So let me go ahead and run this. So the service is exposed on this port. So let's give it some time. And meanwhile, let's check the UI. And there we go. This shows us a pretty cool dashboard where we have deployed one pod running WordPress web application, one pod running MySQL, and there is a replica set. Of course, there is currently it is set to just one pod. And these are the two deployments that we have launched. So you can, you can always use this to verify and manage your deployment, or you can also come back to the command prompt and use the powerful cube control commands. So kubectl get pods is now pointing to our single node Kubernetes cluster. 
So let's get these services and there are three services, the default Kubernetes service, the WordPress and the MySQL. So in less than five minutes, I could set up a single node cluster on my local machine, deployed a full-fledged app, and I also got access to the dashboard. But it doesn't end with that. In, in typical production environments, there are multiple Kubernetes clusters set up. For example, developers would be targeting their local machines running something like Minikube, and the enterprise IT would set up a slightly more powerful Kubernetes cluster, maybe running Tectonic from CoreOS, and that's running within the data center. And then the production workload may be deployed on Google Container Engine. Once you have Minikube set up and once you have access to other clusters, it's fairly easy for you to switch environments. So currently, if we look at the um, context, so we notice that it is pointing to multiple deployment contexts. So we are currently using, of course, the MIDI cube, but I can very quickly switch to my staging environment running, let's say, CoreOS Tectonic. So how do I do that? It's pretty simple. Cube control config use context vagrant multi. So this is an environment that is currently running CoreOS Tectonic. So now when I repeat the command cube control get nodes, you notice that my client is now pointing to a staging cluster. That's not all. I am actually running my production environment in uh, Google Container Engine, right? So let's first make sure that it is running. So G Cloud Container Clusters list. So this is going to show me the available production clusters deployed on Google Cloud. So in Asia East 1A, I have a production cluster running. Again, with one command, I can point my cube control to the production environment. So G Cloud followed by container clusters get credential followed by the production cluster name. So this is going to point cube control to my production environment. So now when I type cube control get nodes, we'll see a completely different output. And this is pointing to my production environment. So with Kubernetes 1.3, there is a continuum. Developers work on Minikube, the larger IT targets a non-prem deployment and the production applications through a CI CD pipeline hit the Google Container Engine, which is also running Kubernetes 1.3. Of course, you can also use federated clusters where you can bring applications running across multiple clusters together and you can manage them from one tool. But that's for a different demo. I hope you understood the concept of Minikube and the power it brings to developers. Stay tuned for some more demos on Kubernetes 1.3. Thanks for watching.